Jessica had long cherished the dream of vacationing at an upscale resort in California. Yet the demands of her life made it challenging to achieve this goal. As a single mother, she devoted herself tirelessly to fulfilling the needs of her two children. Kevin and Lisa, who were her world, despite the obstacles, she found immense pleasure in their tight-knit relationship and creative playtime. Which ranged from small dolls to bulky plastic trucks. Watching her children's friendship and inventiveness, Jessica often felt a profound contentment with the beautiful family dynamics she had cultivated. Yet, a cloud loomed over Jessica's otherwise happy existence. Tragedy struck two years earlier when her husband, Bruce Taylor, a successful businessman known for his regular business trips to nearby cities and states, died under enigmatic circumstances. On that doomed day, Bruce had followed his typical morning routine, having breakfast with his family and bidding them farewell with a kiss. He mentioned a crucial late meeting as he departed, unaware that these would be his final words to his family. Jessica felt an unexplained anxiety throughout that day, and when the phone rang that evening, a sense of foreboding overwhelmed her. Her deepest fears were realized by the detached voice of a police officer, who reported Bruce's deadly car crash. Hurrying to his meeting, he had sped, lost control on a complex stretch of the highway, and his car had plunged into a ditch, rolling several times before bursting into flames. Despite the fierce blaze that nearly destroyed the vehicle, rescue workers discovered his charred remains. The authorities concluded the investigation quickly, determining it was a straightforward traffic accident. However, Jessica found this hard to accept. She remembered Bruce as a meticulous and prudent driver, boasting a perfect driving record with no tickets or fines. The agony of her loss only intensified as time passed, and not a day went by without her children innocently asking when their daddy would come home. In those agonizing moments, the grief-stricken widow found it almost impossible to restrain her tears. Struggling to convey the finality of their loss to her young children, Jessica had always gone to great lengths to ensure that her children, Lisa and Kevin, never felt the absence of their father, who was no longer a part of their lives. Not only did she ensure they were cared for and loved, but she also nurtured the memory of their father with stories and pictures, trying her best to fill the void left by his mysterious departure. She worked tirelessly to provide for them, Yet she also dedicated every moment of her spare time to ensuring their joy and welfare. Regular trips to the local park, multiple movie evenings, and excursions to various sites were frequent for the family, fostering treasured memories together. On a bright afternoon, seven-year-old Kevin voiced a desire to see the ocean, a wish ignited by a recent film they had seen about Caribbean pirates sailing under the Jolly Roger. The stories of old ships undulating ocean waves, and buried treasure chests had captured young Kevin's imagination, making the sea his new passion. Lisa, just a year younger, quickly adopted her brother's ambition with the same vigor, understanding the significance of this newfound quest. Jessica decided it was time for a family getaway to one of California's scenic coastal resorts. She was aware that the trip would not only realize her children's aspirations but also provide her with a much-needed respite from the increasing stress and challenges at home. Having requested some time off from work, Jessica started planning the vacation. Holding the plane tickets in her hand, she playfully inquired, So, are you kids ready for this trip or what? Kevin and Lisa exclaimed together. Of course we're ready. Their excitement was infectious, bringing a smile to Jessica's face. Even as she verified the contents of their travel bags, a lingering thought troubled her that she might have overlooked something vital like sunscreen, sunglasses, or hats for the kids. Mom, can I sail on a yacht or swim with a mask and flippers? Kevin's questions persisted, his excitement uncontainable. Sure you can, but first, you need to go to bed to rest up before the flight, Jessica responded, gently ushering him towards his bedroom. Though they could have taken a bus from Utah to California, Jessica chose to fly to save time. Considering their tight schedule, the next morning, the family awoke earlier than usual, full of eagerness and anticipation for their adventure. After breakfast, they made their way to the airport. It was Kevin and Lisa's first time flying, 
and the sight of the massive aircraft up close was exhilarating for them. Once aboard, they immediately pressed their faces against the plane windows, keen to observe the world transform as they took off. Jessica smiled at their amazement but soon tried to snatch a brief nap. During the flight, despite her fatigue, thoughts of her deceased husband, who was absent from this familial gathering, kept her awake. However, as the aircraft started its descent, Jessica's sadness gave way to excitement and anticipation for the adventures that lay ahead. The prospect of the ocean and creating new memories uplifted her spirits as they neared landing. Upon arrival in California, they were greeted by the intense sun coupled with a gentle ocean breeze, leaving a subtle taste of salt on their lips. Amid the excitement, Kevin, adjusting his baseball cap, eagerly inquired, Mom, when are we heading to the beach? I'm excited to watch the surfers. Jessica responded with a comforting smile. Once we've checked into the hotel, we'll make our way to the beach. There's ample time to enjoy the sunshine. Privately, Jessica was just as thrilled about the prospect of diving into the warm sea. Upon checking into their hotel, Jessica took her kids, Lisa and Kevin, directly to the beach. The area was bustling with holidaymakers. Beach chairs were dotted around the sand and early birds were already lounging under the intense sunlight. Near the water's edge, Jessica, along with Kevin and Lisa, found a perfect spot. Here, the gentle ocean waves lapped at their feet as they sunbathed, their skin gradually taking on a bronzed hue in the scorching heat. Eventually, Kevin and Lisa felt thirsty and wanted something to help them cool off. Jessica scanned the area and spotted a drink stand near the entrance of the beach. I'll go grab some refreshments. Kevin, look after things till I return, she instructed, taking some cash with her to purchase the beverages. From a distance, she noticed a man at the stand, wearing a branded apron and a cap featuring the emblem of a well-known football team. As she approached and pulled out her money, the vendor glanced up and courteously inquired, How can I assist you today, ma'am? Just as she was about to order three lemonades, Jessica stopped abruptly. The man serving her looked astonishingly like her deceased husband. She turned ghostly white and stumbled back, struggling for breath as though she was being choked. Are you all right, ma'am? Is there something wrong? The vendor asked with concern. Is something wrong? The vendor asked with a look of concern when he noticed Jessica's stunned expression. Overwhelmed by shock, Jessica found herself unable to reply. The thought that her husband, who had passed away two years prior, could be standing before her was inconceivable, as the queue of impatient customers behind her urged the perplexed woman to move aside. Jessica's eyes remained locked on the lemonade seller, who bore an uncanny resemblance to her deceased spouse. Questions flooded her mind. How could this be Bruce? And why would he pretend to be someone else? While she struggled to process her shock, a striking woman in her thirties, who owned the booth, approached to assess the disruption. Jessica stood on the sunlit beach, her gaze unwavering from the lemonade stand a short distance away. Her noticeably pregnant belly was evident, and the ambient noise of people queuing for refreshments surrounded her. She inadvertently caught a businesswoman sharply chastising Simon, the vendor, for his slow service. The irritation in the woman's voice was clear. This scene deepened Jessica's confusion. She questioned the nature of the relationship between Simon and the businesswoman. Could it be more than professional? This suspicion added to her worries, particularly since the man closely resembled Bruce, who was already a father of two. Her mind was abuzz with thoughts, trying hard to manage the surge of emotions. Despite her rising curiosity, Jessica decided to purchase her lemonade from another vendor and return to her children, who were playing on the beach. As she sat observing them, she couldn't shake off the enigma. She knew she had to delve deeper but needed to look after her children first. Her son, Kevin, was reluctant to leave, yearning for more beach time. Soothing his disappointment, Jessica assured him they would come back later and suggested he and his sister, Lisa, could watch some cartoons at the hotel in the meantime. After ensuring her children were safe at the hotel, Jessica returned to the beach with a renewed focus. She was not there to relax but to scrutinize the lemonade vendor closely. The man was the spitting image of her late husband, awakening a tumult of emotions within her. 
she waited until he closed up for the day, then discreetly followed him at a distance to his substantially larger home adorned with red flowers. Nestled in a quaint house adorned with tiles and ivy covered walls. Nearly a short walk from the beach, Jessica felt a mix of excitement and apprehension as she approached the dwelling and gently knocked. Her heart racing in anticipation of the secrets she might unveil. Upon opening the door, Jessica was met by a pregnant woman who seemed to be the proprietor of a nearby lemonade stand. The woman's expression clearly conveyed her displeasure at seeing Jessica. In a state of confusion and distress, Jessica hastily revealed that she was there to uncover the truth about her husband. Bruce, the woman's expression quickly morphed into one of fear and despair, her complexion turning ghostly as she fought to keep her poise. After regaining some composure, the woman confessed that she referred to him as Simon, a name she preferred, and admitted she had anticipated that Jessica might discover them one day. She implored Jessica to understand, stressing her pregnancy and her resolve to maintain her family unit. Overcome with anger, Jessica crossed the threshold, coming face to face with the harsh reality of her husband's deceitful existence. Bruce already has two children. He is my lawful husband, she asserted her voice echoing with the pain of betrayal and the unfairness of it all. Within the home, the argument escalated, unraveling a complex web of feelings and choices set to alter their lives drastically. Jessica was not prepared to back down without a fight. Her eyes burned with a blend of fury and resentment. At that precise moment, Bruce entered the living room, unintentionally witnessing the intense exchange. What's going on here, Sandra? Who is this woman? And why are you addressing her this way? Bruce demanded, his tone laden with outrage. It was then that Jessica realized Bruce genuinely had no memory of his previous life. I'm your true wife, Bruce. We have two children, Kevin and Lisa, she declared, tears cascading down her cheeks. Taken aback by Jessica's proclamation, Sandra retreated towards the kitchen. Jessica's disclosure seemed to trigger a recollection in Bruce causing him such an intense headache that he fell to his knees. Gradually, fragments of memories and thoughts began to merge, sparking a moment of recognition in his clouded consciousness. I remember, I remember everything, I'm not Simon, my name is Bruce Taylor, he declared as he stood up from the floor. Overcome with emotion, Jessica rushed to Bruce, embracing him tightly, in their poignant reunion, they momentarily overlooked Sandra who stealthily made her exit, her departure as subtle as her presence, if you won't be mine. No one else can have you either. Sandra yelled as she charged towards Bruce with a knife in her hand. Bruce narrowly avoided the assault, sustaining just a minor scratch on his shoulder. He quickly restrained Sandra by forcing her to the ground, while Jessica urgently called 911. Thirty minutes later, the turmoil had died down. It was later discovered that Sandra Green had been battling an untreated mental illness that had gradually turned her into a sociopath. Two years earlier, while returning to California from Utah, she stumbled upon Bruce, who was injured and unconscious beside the road. Previously, Bruce had unknowingly given a lift to a hitchhiker who was actually a dangerous felon. The criminal had attacked Bruce, stolen his car, and eventually crashed it a few miles away dying in the resulting fire. Instead of taking Bruce to a hospital, Sandra, possibly driven by solitude, took him to her home in California. Her reasons were ambiguous, whether it was sheer loneliness or something more sinister that influenced her actions. It was a strange rescue that initiated a series of events leading to the intense encounter that had just occurred. After deceiving a man who had lost his memory, Sandra had focused on planning her life. Nevertheless, she failed to consider an important fact. The truth always comes to light. This was proven when Bruce and Jessica, despite being apart for two years, eventually reunited, showing that secrets can't be kept forever. Following these revelations, Sandra was mandated to undergo psychiatric treatment. Meanwhile, Bruce and Jessica, whose relationship had survived time and deception, celebrated their reunion by taking a vacation at one of California's top resorts. Overwhelmed with happiness to be together once more, they vowed eternal loyalty and pledged never to part again.
Watching the joy of their reunion, Kevin and Lisa, the parents, felt reassured, they were confident that Bruce and Jessica would remain true to their commitments to each other. With this renewed trust, the family looked forward to many more vacations by the sea, cherishing the bond that had been reaffirmed under the sunny skies of California. Do you have any thoughts after hearing the above story? Tell us in the comments section. We'd like to hear your thoughts. That's for today's story. Please subscribe and give a thumbs up. See you next time.